No way. I can't believe this. So, this review... Today I'm going to be reading bad reviews for Root, one of my all-time favorite games. I think it's in my top five of all time. Root is an asymmetrical war game all about forest creatures and woodland might and right, according to the top of the box here. It's a beautiful game, it's a lovely game, it's a super unique game that I absolutely love. I'll get into why I love it so much when I'm responding to some of these reviews because I have a feeling they're gonna be erroneous. Is that a word? Oh wow. Erroneous just means wrong. It is currently ranked 27 on BoardGameGeek, and I have it personally rated as a 9.5 out of 10. Hopefully, if you are interested in Root, um, these bad reviews, along with my responses to them, will help you to determine whether or not Root is a game for you. I know it's a game for me, um, and I'm sure it's not gonna be a game for these people right here, so let's jump into these reviews. This is the first time I've read any of these reviews, so it's gonna be a completely live reactions to some of these, and I'm gonna hopefully be able to respond to them in a way that's helpful for you, or hilarious in general, because I'm upset about it. Um, because when people don't like my favorite games, it's fine, but I'm still upset. <laughs> <laughs> the first one we're gonna read. <laughs> is a great it's a review one out of ten by bloody me i gave up after one turn i have a feeling that that's really not enough of an experience to be able to review anything that'd be like leaving a movie theater after 15 minutes of the movie and being like yeah it's a bad movie no thanks to that review felipe alameda says this game feels like homework to learn and play it has two manuals and several cue cards but none of them explains everything you need to know me and my three friends spent hours through multiple playthroughs just to learn each faction, and in every play there's always something that we were missing. But most importantly, we weren't having any fun. It really is a chore to play, and it truly feels like we were wasting our time, so we decided to finally give up and play something else. If you like intricate and detailed gameplay, maybe this one is for you, but I'm sitting this one out. That's actually a fair review. Um, he, he clearly knows that there is something good here for certain players. It's good for me. Um, and he knows it's not good for him, so I, I just, I, respect to you, Felipe, it does sound like the game's not for you, and that's the end of it. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> Very poor game. I don't understand how it can occupy such a high position in the ranking. Every game I played in this game turned out to be boring. The game is not balanced. Some factions do less than others. Some are based on interaction with other players, which is why you are bound to fail if they do not want to cooperate with you. This game is weak in every aspect of mechanic, but probably the biggest frustration is caused by the fight, which is very primitive. It is based on the roll of the dice. I don't mind rolling dice like, for example, in Star Wars Rebellion, but this system here is just ridiculous. You can't plan anything in the game because it all comes down to rolling the dice. Therefore, in my opinion, the game cannot be called strategic because it is painfully random. Balance is another weak point. This game is unbalanced. Some factions are stronger than others. The green player usually wins in my group. I understand the asymmetry of the faction, and in most of the games I like it, like in Heroes of Land and Sea and Gaia Project, but you can see that in this game, a lot of factions is an added to sell an add-on, etc. My guess is that in most cases, players overrated this game because of the theme and the graphics. There are several better positions on the market in this category, and it is a waste of time to play such a weak game as Root. So that's a very bold review. I think that his main basis of the review is that it's unbalanced and random. And I do think there is some randomness. The rolling of the dice, for instance, is naturally random. But in my experience, it almost never swings the game in any direction besides if you weren't ready for what could be a bad chance, then you actually weren't prepared enough. Um, and thus, it actually maybe was your fault. There, because there's always a chance for something to go wrong like that, you can adjust accordingly and play knowing that's that's possible. If you need to protect a specific clearing, make sure you have four or five guys to protect it because otherwise, you know, it, anything can happen. But I actually found the fighting to be very great of a system. Basically, the way that combat works is that you roll two dice. Um, the numbers on the dice are equal to zero, one, two, or three. And it, as the attacker, you get the higher number and the defender gets the lower number and you deal that much damage to each other's units. The reason why I think this works so well is that it is obviously better to attack which means it actually incentivizes everyone to play more aggressively than they might have otherwise wanted to. Um, and it actually creates for really fun combat, really fun gameplay, really exciting moments. So I don't think the randomness has almost 
any impact on the gameplay. At least it doesn't negatively impact the strategy. Um, and with the balance thing, I can maybe see that, but I actually feel like every faction is really powerful. You just have to know how the other factions play and what you need to do to stop a specific faction. So for them, the green faction always wins, which is the Woodland Alliance, and they're really powerful, but there are ways you can stop them, and as long as you know how that works, then the game actually self-balances itself, I think, really well. So that's my response to that. So if you read that and you go, oh, I don't like randomness, I don't think that that should scare you away from Root at all. Um, I also don't love just super random gameplay, but this one actually feels like it's not just too random. So, sorry, dude. This is a... Oh my gosh. The Seventh Legion says, anyone buying this game is in for a terrible first experience. Or five. Um, it says it's hard to learn. Um, I might see this game becoming enjoyable after ten or more attempts at playing it, but do not expect to play this with friends who've never played before and enjoy your time. I bought this because of the good reviews. However, it is terribly explained game right from the moment you unpack the box. I also specifically bought this to play with two people, figuring you could pick any faction, but the game isn't balanced, so you're stuck with be only being able to play as two specific factions, meaning you experience 50% of the game. Do yourself a favor and skip this game. So I agree that the game isn't great at two players with just the base game. Usually, if you're going to play a game that's two to four players and you're only going to play with two, I recommend doing some research first because you would very quickly find that people don't recommend Root at two players. Now, with the Clockwork expansion or the upcoming Marauders expansion, two players actually is a solid option. Um, but Root on its own, two players isn't great. And so obviously you're not going to have a great experience. Just do some research. That's all I have to say. Also, I had a great first experience. I won. So that's how. <laughs> Bakerja says, I despise this game. Okay. And Gino says, played three times already. Bad, bad, so bad. <laughs> See, I love the reviews that have really nothing to say, and they just think it's bad. And I'm like, you haven't given me a single reason why, but it's usually funny. Like this guy, Braxton Bragg says, mindless muck. <laughs> what is it? Okay. I, I do actually agree with this one. Uh, Michelian says, unique game design of highly asymmetrical style requires that each faction player knows how to do their part to maintain a balance in the game. If a player tilts this fragile balance, someone will win outright without giving others a chance, no matter how strong they are in their gameplay. In other words, game balance is highly dependable on players. I think it's fairly accurate. Um, not completely. I do think that the player with the most skill often is going to win. But there is an amount that, that the players are preventing each other from getting too powerful. And so if one person, say, the Vagamon might be really strong against the Marquis de Cat, if the Vagamon is lacking, the Marquis de Cat is naturally going to do stronger. I don't know if that's an accurate example. I just thought of it off the top of my head. But I can totally see that being an issue. And that is one thing that actually gets better as you play the game more because everyone starts understanding the whole picture of the game. I also feel like, I think it's actually really interesting. It's an interesting part of the game. It's what makes it feel like a real ecosystem. It's really what makes the game shine in a way. So even though I see that, I can see why that would be an issue for some people. It actually ends up playing out for the better in my experience. Herney McMurray says, not a war game. I mean, yeah, I can see what you're saying. I don't know what that means. It's why that means it's one out of 10 specifically, unless you only like war games. Oh my god. So this guy agrees that it's not a war game, but he's taking it another step further. He says, I don't play this game and I don't even mind to play it because I saw the description of the game and this game is a strategy game, not a war game, considering all games in this category. So I put it a one because the category of the game is clearly wrong. The wrongness must be corrected to assure that this category is not polluted by someone who want to do marketing for his game in a category that is not correct for this game. If this injustice is not corrected, you will see the game be number one or number three in its category. And if this case happens, I will not contribute financially anymore to BGG until that justice is corrected. If the case is corrected, I will retire my one rating and continue as usual to contribute to BGG. So it's still, he still rates it a one, which means it clearly hasn't been corrected. I didn't realize that people were that picky about the group that it's in, which is Wargame. I don't, I mean, I get why Wargamers are pretty like, this is a Wargame, this is not a Wargame. Can't be that big of a problem. 
Maybe it is. Let me know in the comments if you've played Root, do you, and if you've played other war games, do you feel like Root is or isn't a war game? I think that forgetting to mention that Root is a war game actually will cause more dissonance in players' expectations because they're expecting a strategy game with less interaction, but it's actually incredibly brutal and tactical and I think that that's more accurate to say than saying it's not a war game because it's not X, Y, and Z in the war game genre. I don't know. That's just me. Um, I also don't know a lot about war gaming, so I'm making this up. This is another one where you could have just avoided the game by doing simple research. Your Golas says, too complex for five-year-olds. Artwork cannot be tolerated by an adult on his right kind of mind. No one, who told you that Root is a good game for five-year-olds? Besides, you saw the art and decided not to look up anything about the game. It literally, literally says age is 10 plus. That's double five. Also, I completely actually am almost upset about the fact that he says the artwork can't be tolerated by an adult in his right mind. Because I actually love the artwork. I am an adult. I think I'm in my right mind. The artist is an adult. And I think that he's a respectable and one of my favorite artists in the board gaming hobby of all time, easily. Maybe my number one. So, I just don't appreciate that. Um, I think that's fantastic. One of the best things about Root. Um, and I understand that it doesn't match the, the, the gameplay. But I think that's exciting and interesting. It's called juxtaposition. If you've ever been to English class, you'll know what that is. Bill Nihilist says, 1 out of 10 sucks. No way. I can't believe this. So, this review... This review... I saw this guy before. He reviewed Spirit Island as well, and I did a reaction video about reading Spirit Island negative reviews, and this guy's review is back, basically saying the exact same thing. He's, so, if you've watched that one, you might remember this. If you haven't, definitely make sure you watch it after this video. You'll see him again. He says... I came here because of all of the people rating games like Kingdom Death Monster or Hate with a 1 just because of their mature theme. I'm offended by how boring the theme of this game is. So this guy loves mature themed games. And he hates when people don't love those and give them 1s. So he's looking out for all the games with not mature themes and giving those games 1s. He did it with Spirit Island. He's doing it with Root. And apparently he's offended by how boring the theme is. I think the theme is great. <laughs> That's just so funny. He's back. His name's Frozen Flesh. Of course he likes King Death Monster. Vikings40 says, very bad game. Another one that I can't argue with because he didn't actually make a point. What? <laughs> what is this? People are crazy. He said, this guy says, it is a great game for all the closet sociopaths that want to spend two hours learning the rules so they could spend two more hours killing small animals with their friends. At least put a violent theme on it to match the contents like Vikings or hipsters defending fair trade coffee. <laughs> I wish there was a game about hipsters defending fair trade coffee. I feel like I'm not a sociopath for liking Root, but that's just me. Drop a comment below if you disagree with that statement. Do you think I'm a sociopath for liking Root? Just let me know. Another guy says it's not a war game. Okay, I hear you. PopTech says, has a large number of teenage girls joined BGG recently? I do not understand why a kitty animal game is trending on this site. Childish garbage like this is now infecting the war gaming category. It is a sad day for gaming if grown men are going to embarrass themselves being caught playing this. <laughs> I'm really um, nervous and scared about the toxic masculinity happening in the wargaming genre right now. I don't know what else to say. I don't think this guy played the game though. I think he just saw it and was really upset that there's cute things on his wargaming genre. Oh man. I didn't expect to see this. I was expecting mostly to see people say it's too complicated to learn and thus I never had fun and maybe it's a little too, maybe there's a little bit too much of a runaway leader problem. That's what I was expecting. I didn't expect to see a bunch of people pissed off that there's a cute game in the war gaming genre. I don't know what this guy means. He says 5 out of 10, 3.68. Is that your actual rating? Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. El Pollo Tender says that after our first play, everyone in the group was a bit confused as to how we felt about the game. The messy rules kept us from getting any excitement out of it. 
and we couldn't move with the confidence we were, that we were doing it right. So we had so many questions that the rule book introduces, but never really answers. I get that being an issue. Um, but then, he, then he says about five plays in, I could see that our perception has definitely changed. This game is great. It doesn't really have a lot of action for a war game, which was a bit dis disappointing, but the strategy required by each faction will keep you on your toes. All the factions are so unique that even when you play with the same people choosing different factions, the game always feels different. It feels as we guess it was meant to feel as if everyone was playing a different game using the same board. Update, I feel forced to play this. My friends love it a bit too much, but I just find it boring. Games always feel the same way, and the expansions don't make it any better. They're just extra content for the sake of content. The original four factions and the river folk are enough, and the new hirelings add something interesting to the game. Other than Anything other than that is just clutter. At this point, I'm only keeping it because it's pretty. Decrease the rating from 9 to 5. So he had it at 9, and then he got tired of it. I haven't had that experience. I don't think I'm going to have that experience. I find that every faction added has added a lot of uniqueness and depth and variety, especially when you start pairing different factions together. But anyways, it's interesting to hear that this guy ended up feeling that the game feels the same way every time. I think the subtlety and the nuance to each game makes it, even if a game feels sort of similar, generally really different. Plus I love all the factions, so I just disagree with that for me, but there we go. Some people have different experience. <laughs> what? Halibat Frank says five out of 10, fun to learn, broken to play. This guy is different from anyone I've ever met. Um, he's probably similar to me because I do think it is fun to learn five or six, you know, every single time I play the game, I'm like, oh, there's another game I get to learn because I like learning games. Broken to play, I'm not really sure what that's supposed to mean. Um, I think it's great to play. So that's that. I appreciate this one. He says, don't like it because the gap between beginners and experienced players is too wide. Should have bought the app instead. I, that for sure I get that I, I love when when skill gap is a, is it's part of a game because it usually means that the, the gameplay is meaningful for me but I totally get why that that would be a negative for you I think this guy just needs to get over it he says he sold the game because the inherent player driven balance leads to unsatisfying early games and discourages non-dedicated groups to explore the game's full potential if you have the awareness to know that then why don't you explore the game's full potential you obviously know there is potential, and you're just saying that you got discouraged. I don't know. I don't... I'm not into that one. I'm not into it. The art is cool. The theme is cool. The asymmetry sucks. Okay. Sea Peace Eggshell says, This game is an extreme design in terms of player agency and asymmetry. The dynamics between players totally determine how enjoyable the game will be. There's loads of depth within, within each faction, and each combination will bring unique challenges. Plus... Beautiful production, one of the best. Uh, the general rules are relatively intuitive. I agree with that. Even though some people have been talking about the rules as being un incomprehensible, I think it actually is really simple at its heart. You move around, do things, attack, whatnot. It's like not that crazy. Craft some items, get some abilities. Do whatever you can to get points. It's really not that crazy. Um, the shared deck is a clever way to tie together the various factions. I agree with that. Players always have impactful things to do. So that's his positives. But then his negatives is what I guess brings it down to a five. He says, if a leader is not attacked, they will win. If a leader is attacked too much, they will lose and some runner up will win instead. The players not in the lead basically decide who will win. So this game is not fun if anyone in particular is attached to winning or thinks winning always comes from playing well. So that's frustrating and it does happen in Root sometimes. But if you think about it, what that actually just means is that don't get too far ahead too soon because then you'll be targeted and you will lose all your momentum and then, and then just have no more steam left. That actually means it's, the game becomes more interesting because everyone has to try to pretend like they're not going to win and then sneak up and actually do take the win. In general, it means that you actually have to be much more aware of what's going on and how you play out your strategy um, and it creates for really exciting games, I think. His other negative is that the teach is really long because each faction is different and 50% of the teaching time is just addressing individual factions so that other players so other players will feel uninvolved. Do not play with inexperienced gamers. I can agree with that. Learning the game is rough. I think it's just worth the learning curve, mostly. But I do see why it would be considered a negative for specific groups or whatnot. So 100%, this guy, that was a great review. It sounded like his positives were way higher than his negatives, so I'm unsure how it ended up, ended up being a 5, but... I don't know. Some of those reviews are ridiculous. 
Some of them are fairly accurate in some ways for specific players, and some of them I think I just disagree with. But um, let me know in the comments below if you agreed with any of these reviews. I want to hear what you think about Root. Um, I, like I said, love it quite a bit. I think it's great, and the expansions make it even better. Um, but we want to hear from you, so drop a comment below and let us know. And if you are interested, we have a gameplay video of Root that we live streamed a few months ago, and it was so dang fun. So check that out right here if you want to see us play this great game. I also want to give a shout out to all of our patrons. We're so thankful that you are supporting the channel. It means so much to us as well as it is, like I said, supporting us and what we're doing here at Being Friends. So thank you so much to all of you, Becky Street, Stacy Hampton, Michael Rosado, Stephen Eddins, Tody Beck, and Travis C. You guys mean the world to us, and you guys are making this possible. For all of our patrons, I'm looking forward to the after show where we're gonna just talk to you more about Root, some read some more bad reviews, as well as just to discuss what what every everything that I think I'm gonna even say. It's just off the cuff. Um, so anyone who is interested, check out our Patreon. Um, it means a lot if you even support the lowest tier possible. And everyone who is a patron, I'm looking forward to talking with you even more and keeping the conversation going.